President Biden, you can say, went fishing today. Not literally, but politically. He held a White House event today seeking to drive attention to health care as potential bait for voters while he's struggling to find some sort of campaign issue to connect with the voters. The Biden administration continues to claim that the intentionally misnamed, and I'm going to say that purposefully, the misnamed Inflation Reduction Act that passed in uh, 2022 has somehow helped consumers. But uh, the truth of it all, it is a massive government overspending that is mandated upon the American people, and it has strangled economic growth in this country. Well, joining me now to discuss all of this is Congressman Buddy Carter. He's a member of the Budget Committee, as well as the Committee on Energy and Commerce. He represents the 1st Congressional District of the great state of Georgia. Congressman Carter, welcome back to Washington Watch. Always great to see you. Always great to see you, my friend. And congratulations on the new book. I look forward to reading it. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. All right, we've got a lot to cover right here, uh, Congressman Carter. I, I, the Biden administration thinks somehow that health care and the Inflation Reduction Act are winning campaign topics for them. And I just kind of scratched my head over this. But you, a leader on all of these issues, you're saying that the president's health care schemes are uh, they're, they're making things worse. Tell us why. Well, they are making things worse. And let me preface this by saying that the Inflation Reduction Act, which, as you noted, is a misnomer, it's misnamed, it shouldn't be that at all, But uh, and, and that's certainly not what it did. But that is, without question, in the 10 years that I served in the Georgia State Legislature and the 10 years that I've been in Congress, it is the worst legislation that I have ever seen, at least the prescription drug portion of it is. What it is doing is killing cures. You know, America is the greatest innovator in the world. We we have had more innovation in America with drugs than any other country. I practiced pharmacy, as you know, Jody, for almost 40 years. As a result of research and development, as a result of innovation, I saw nothing short of cures, nothing short of miracles through through research and development. And yet what this legislation does and what this president's health care legislation does is just kill cures. It's been estimated by the University of Chicago that it'll result in 130 fewer cures coming to market in the next 10 years. Now, what's that going to be the cure for? Is it going to be the cure for Alzheimer's? Is it going to be the cure for ALS, for cancer? We don't know. Even if it's one, and by the way, the Congressional Budget Office has said that it will be at least one every year for the next 10 years that we won't come up with a cure. Already drug companies have stopped in research and development and drugs that were in the pipeline because of this piece of legislation. His whole health care record is pitiful. It is awful. I mean, here we have a president who's allowing this this southern border to be penetrated by so much fentanyl that it's killing 200, 200 Americans every day. It's, it's ridiculous. Wow. Well, this is precisely why I wanted you on the program, uh, Congressman Buddy Carter. I, I, your, your background, nobody knows this I don't uh, that I'm aware of in Congress any better than you. But, you know, while the Biden administration continues to push all this health care stuff, it's it's interesting to me, startling to me, to some extent, that he's enlisted Senator Bernie Sanders, Mr. Medicaid, Medicare for all uh, himself, who's trying to push all of this. What, what do you make of that? What does that tell us? Well, uh, you, you know, I, I have to be quite honest with you. We, I've actually seen some um, some progress in, in prescription drug pricing in particular. Remember, again, I, a pharmacist. I practiced pharmacy, retail pharmacy for over 40 years. I was the one who had to go to the counter and tell the senior citizen how much their medication was and watch them make a decision between buying their medication and buying groceries. I was the one who had to go to the counter and tell the mother how much her child's antibiotic was going to be and watch her in tears as she tried to figure out how she was going to pay for that antibiotic. I said as my focus when I got, when I became a member of the state legislature and especially in Congress, that I was going to do something about prescription drug pricing. We've made progress, but we haven't made enough progress. Now, look, 
the drug companies need to do a better job with their pricing. There's no question about that. I'm not going to take up for them. They need to do a better job. But that's not where the problem is. The problem is in the vertical integration that exists, where you've got the insurance company that owns the pharmacy benefit manager, that owns the group purchasing organization, that owns the pharmacy, that owns the doctor. That vertical integration results in higher drug prices and higher health care costs. And that's something we need to bust up. The first thing I did when I became a member of Congress was go to the FTC and ask them to look at this. Look at what is happening here. Finally, about a year and a half ago, they, in, they undertook a study to look at the impact that PBMs, pharmacy benefit managers, are having on prescription drug prices on independent retail pharmacies. Now, They've been in that study for a year and a half already. They have said, we are retracting some of the statements that we made about PBMs in the past. They're no longer relevant. We in the past said they were beneficial. They are not beneficial. They are not helping drug prices whatsoever. So this is a, a big problem that we need to address in this country. But this administration, they don't get it at all. Now, I will say that Bernie Sanders understands that portion of it, too. He understands that the prescription, the pharmacy benefit managers are a problem. So does AOC. Now, let me tell you, when you get conservatives and you get Bernie Sanders and AOC all on the same page, and that is fighting against the PBMs, you know you've made some progress here. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that is an interesting dynamic, how all that comes into play. Well, let me ask you this. You referred a, a little while ago, we both did, make, made reference to the Inflation Reduction Act. And uh, one, of, one of the things I played a clip uh, as we were coming on, that the president claims that the uh, Inflation Reduction Act cuts a deficit by $160 billion. Can you set the record straight and tell us what he's hoping that the American people don't know about this uh, piece of legislation? Again, as you pointed out in, in your opening statement and your opening monologue, but it, 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 it is misnamed. It is not the Inflation Reduction Act. In fact, it's going to increase inflation. We all know that. Where he's getting these numbers of saving on the deficit is beyond me. This is not going to be the case. And, and, and again, Jody, what good is it going to do us to save money if we're killing cures, if we're killing innovation? This, this is one of the things that I've struggled with ever since I've been, as a healthcare professional, ever since I've been a member of the state legislature and of, of Congress. And that is making, helping people to understand that well care, keeping people well and, and finding solutions to these problems in the end will save us money. The more people we can keep off of dialysis, the more people we can keep from having to have insulin, the, the more we can save. Think of how much Alzheimer's is going to cost us in the future. If we can find a, a, a cure for Alzheimer's, then we can not only save a tremendous amount of money, we can also save the, the, the wear and tear, if you will, that it will have on caregivers. You've seen it. You know people, and we all know people Absolutely. who've tried to take care of someone with Alzheimer's and the toll it takes on them, on the caregiver, physically. Yes. Just think, if we could get a cure for Alzheimer's, how much we could save. Let me let me. Uh, that's a great point. And yeah, I think I don't know that there's a family that hasn't been touched by something like Alzheimer's. And you bring up an excellent point. If I can, we've only got a little over a minute left. Let me switch gears. The Department of Energy canceled plans to refill our depleted strategic oil reserves because the prices are at five months high. Your role on energy and commerce is huge. This is another broken promise from the president. What's your take on this? Again, you know, what the president did with the Strategic uh, Petroleum Reserve was absolutely wrong. He used it for the wrong purposes. That's why we passed the Strategic Production Response Act, so that any president, Republican or Democrat, has to have a legitimate reason to use it. In, in 2022, our, we had um, over 600 barrels of oil. 600 million barrels of oil. Now we're down to around 330. And why did he use it? He used it for political gain, to bring and try to keep the price of oil and gas down. Remember, when he took office, the price of oil, the price of gasoline, I should say, was $2.39 a gallon. Now we're bumping up around $4 a gallon again, and it'll probably be more than that before it's, before it's all said and done. But that's not Thank what you. that was supposed to be for. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Congressman Buddy Carter.